Everybody needs good neighbors With a little understanding You can find the perfect plan Another. That's when good neighbors become good friends. All set? I'm organized. Let's go. Seems dreadful. You were so young. Such a beautiful girl. Yes. I love the way she laughed. I'd do almost anything to make her laugh. I don't suppose she had very much to laugh about in prison. If only she hadn't mixed with the men she did. Yes, she had a few unfortunate associations before and after Paul. I tried to tell her, but she wouldn't listen. You wouldn't listen, would you, Terry? You had to have it your way. And look where it's ended. Why didn't you listen? I would have looked after you. Always. I, I don't understand, Reverend Price. But did you know Terry before you met her in prison? Oh, yes, I knew her. I knew you didn't like her. Hey, just about to give up on you and go back to the office. I suppose you'll come to tell me what a disappointment I am too, right? Well, don't be stupid. I know how hard you work. Yeah, a lot of good it did me. You know what Dad wants me to do? Repeat the whole year? Can you believe it? Yeah, well, it's something that you and he are going to have to sort out. Look, I've got something now that just might make the world feel a bit better. Well, it's going to have to be pretty good, Paul. Well, how about this? Hey? Hey? Your new car, sir. Well, well it's not exactly new, but you know what I mean? It's more. Hey. Well, it would have cost more than it was worth to get the other one repaired. <laughs> but I don't get it, Paul. Why? Well, I wrecked your last one. It seems only fair that hey, I replaced it. Hey, but that was only an accident. It wasn't your fault. Hey, okay, if you don't want it, that's fine. No, are you kidding? I just can't believe it. That's all. Look. Listen, there's your papers in there. They're all in your name. And there's a year's rego there, too. Oh, rego. Oh. She is just great. Much better than the original Scotland. Hey, 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 hey. Don't get too carried away. Oh. It's not that great mechanically. Yeah, well, Charlene will help me and Mike. Oh, she will be fantastic. We'll work on her till she's purring like a kitten. Hey, has Gran seen her yet? No, no, I don't know where she is. She must have gone shopping or something before she comes in the office. Well, will you take me for a drive? Yeah. Come on. You mean you still trust me after the last time? Well, as long as I steer clear of runaway prey. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's go. You should have stayed with me. It would have been good for both of us. Why does everybody leave? My mother? My grandmother? You? I would have looked after you, Terry. Made a little world just for you and me. Just us. Together. I think we should go. Oh, I don't want to go. I want to stay here with Terry. Well, even if you don't want to leave, I have to. I've got a family to look after. Your poor, deprived family are going to have to learn to look after themselves. What do you mean? You're not going home, Mrs. Daniels, ever. Maybe I ought to clear her out. Run away? Aren't you getting a bit old for that, Scotty? I'm not talking about running away. I'm just talking about moving out. Why, Kitty? Oh, yeah, where would you go? Don't know yet. A cheap room somewhere, I guess. With what? I'll get a job. Oh, mate, that's easier said than done. Hey, who's got Bob? Is it out there? It's mine, and it's not an old bomb. Yeah. It's a car I got to replace the one of Scott's that got wrecked. 
Oh, lucky boy. Who you got for a spin with after lunch? I'm starving. Greg! I've just got to get it through Dad's head that I'm not going back to school. I understand the way he feels, though. Yeah, like he did when you dropped out of uni. And remember all the hassles you had with him? Just look at how well you've done. Like. Yeah, but he didn't like it when I left uni. But in the end, he let me make my own decision, sure. Just the same as he will with you. So why don't you let things just cool down? If you won't let me keep the car. Oh, you will. Scott, stop being paranoid. What's paranoid, Ben? Look, he'll be okay. He'll calm down once he gets over the shock of you not matriculating. I've got to get over that myself first. Yeah, well, that's why it's best to let the dust settle. What dust? Where's Graham? I don't know. Well, Starby, I want my lunch. Uh, just concentrate on getting your license first, eh? Make sure your lessons are good. Yeah, well... Hey, listen, I still haven't thanked you for the car. You're a fantastic brother. Is that this not your usual <laughs> opinion of me? Yeah, well, you've sure made up for a lot of things this time. Add off. Are you two going to kiss or what? Hey, shut up, Lucy. I want my lunch. Yeah, I'm feeling a bit peckish myself. Okay, Lucy, make us some sandwiches. It's not... Fair. Right, come on, we'll all make some sandwiches. Oh, where's Grant? Oh, no, she can't be too far away. Uh, here we go. I think I've got all the orange off the wall. Trust Turner. Even it's oranges for six. Mm -hmm. It's fun, though, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, no, I don't think my back will ever be the same after all that limbo. <laughs> ah, that's what I like to see. Somebody else cleaning up for a change. Oh, by the way, congratulations on your exam results. Thanks. Thanks. Where's Charlene? Excused herself from the hard work as usual. Uh, she's gone job hunting. Mm. We just thought we'd have a bit of a get-together, you know? Exchange exam results. We said we'd lock up after we've cleaned the place up. Hope you don't mind. Mind? Good heavens, no. It's all the less for me to do. Well, don't let me interrupt. I'm just going to grab a cheesecake. I'm going to go and have lunch with Susan. Job hunting, eh? And doing well in her exams. I think someone switched daughters on me. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Lucky she didn't see this place a couple of hours ago, eh? <laughs> um, listen, Jane, I was sort of thinking there's no reason why we couldn't uh, go out, you know. Somewhere. Together. Yeah, um... Mike, I don't think... Well, why not? I mean, we're enjoying each other's company, aren't we? Yeah, but that doesn't change anything. I told you and Shane that if you went through with that stupid boxing match, I didn't want to see you again. Well, I meant what I said. We can still be friends, though, can't we? Of course we can. Just friends. Come here. I've got everything prepared so it won't take long. Thanks for bringing the cheesecake. Oh, that's all right. It was lovely of you to invite me. Well, we should see more of each other. Mm. Well, I don't know. The time just seems to get away. What, with the office and everything? Yes, how are things going there? Uh, Jane is a great help. Ah, uh, I was thinking more of Paul. No, oh, he's his usual grouchy self. Mm. But to be fair to him, well, he's got a lot on his plate. With Mrs. Mangle being sick, he's got a lot to cope with at the hotel. Yes, Mrs. Mangle was very quiet at Christmas, wasn't she? But not that I'm complaining, not. <laughs> Certainly was. <laughs> I wonder what's happened to Mr. Mangle. Oh, heaven knows. Anyway, even if Paul is busy, he's got no right to be taking things out on you. Mm. Well, Paul's just a little difficult to get along with, that's all. Mm. I think his nose is out of joint. What about? You and Clive? Well, he's got my right to be that way. You know, you're very lucky to have found someone like Clive. Yes, I am. He's everything a girl could want. And he adores Sam. He'll make a wonderful father. Unlike Fred. Mm. Has he been in touch with you, by the way, just to find out how Sam is? Not a word. Mm. But it's just as well because I don't need Fred in my life. Here, here. <laughs> Have you set the wedding date yet? Uh, Saturday fortnight. You'll be getting an invitation in mm. a couple of days. We want to keep it fairly quiet and small, just um, family and close friends. Why? Big weddings are lovely. Oh, not when you've got a baby. Just seems a bit silly. I wouldn't let that make any difference if I were you. I mean, you don't have to walk down the aisle in white or... Oh, Susan, I'm sorry. Mm. Anyway, are you going to keep working up to get married? Um, I'd like to, but... But you don't know how Paul's going to handle it. I never know what to expect from Paul. Mm -hmm. Graham's not here, is she? No, I haven't seen her. Oh, that's strange. She said she was coming back to work when Scott got his foot out of plaster. How is he, anyway? Oh, he's cheered up a lot when I gave him his new car. Mm -hmm. So how did you do with your HSC results? Um, all right. Oh, uh, yeah, better than all right from what I've heard. You haven't got them here, have you? Well... As a matter of fact, I have. <laughs> Jane, these results are fantastic. Yeah, I was pretty happy with them. I bet your grand was too. Mm. Although Nan's not quite herself just yet. Yeah, to be honest, I'll be glad when she's well enough to come back to work. 
You've been very reasonable, you know, giving her time off and everything. Oh, she's a valuable employee, and I'm not quite the ogre I'm cracked up to be. No, the hotel is taking up a lot of my time, though. Actually, I'd really appreciate it if you could stay on until she's better. Mm, I'll stay on as long as you like. Great. I suppose you'd like a bit of free time off before you start uni, though. Well, I was going to take a year off before uni. I thought I might try out for a cheerleader. A cheerleader? Oh, you've got to be kidding. Well, I was told I had a bit of talent as a dancer, and, well, I, I realise it'll be hard work. Oh, with these sorts of results, you could probably do well in half a dozen different fields. I'm not knocking cheerleading, but I really think you're too intelligent to let that go to waste, Jane. In today's business world, there's just as many opportunities for a woman as there are for a man. I, th I really think if you put your mind to it, you could have a great career ahead of you. Mm, maybe. Oh, I'm sure of it. As long as you don't get sidetracked, of course. Well, I wasn't really serious about the cheerleading thing. Uh, yeah, well, I'm not just talking about that. I mean, personal relationships can get in the way of it, too. Well, I won't let that happen, will I? I'm only young, I've got plenty of time ahead of me yet. I'm going to work really hard and make something of myself. Smart girl. And wait for the right guy, too. Okay, put your foot down, mate. See what this thing can do. Whoa. 120 k cables. Watch the corner, watch the corner. Whoa. I've got that. I've got that. Wait a sec. Whoa. Oh, the wheels. I don't believe it. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, wow. Turbo, turbo. Right, ready? Turbo. Oh, Lucy. Yeah, have you heard anything from Gran yet? Uh, look, can you get her to give me a call when she gets in? Yeah. Okay, bye, darling. Hey, Gran does get in this afternoon. I hope James Bookworks getting a bit behind. Well, would you like me to try and sort it out? No, I prefer you try and keep the computer filing up to date. I'm back. Sorry I'm a bit late, but I have Madge over for lunch. Oh, so I suppose you made her late back to the bar as well, did you? We'll both make up the time. You get an hour for lunch, Susan. I think that's ample. In the future, make sure it is. Some trouble in the hotel kitchens. If you need me, you know where to find me, won't you? How come he's so tough on you? Ask him. Paul rang me and told me about it. Don't reckon you're going to make it any shinier. Yeah, well, we're going to try and keep her immaculate. All right, let's have a talk. Dad? That's me. Oh, hi, Dad. Hello, darling. Dad, I know how disappointed you are about my results. Yes, I am. But I don't blame you. I realise you had a lot to contend with at the time. What I am annoyed about is your attitude toward going back to school. Dad, you can't force me to go back. I realise that. I had hoped that you might do the sensible thing without arguing. I just couldn't face it, could I? That's it, you know? Well, that's probably because you've just got your results. We'll talk about it again in a yeah. couple of days. Well, it won't make me feel any different, OK? Let's just leave it for the moment. I also want to talk to you about your car. Lucy? Yeah? Did your grand say you could have those so close to dinner? Grand's not here. Oh, so the office, is she? No, Paul rang a couple of times to see if she was home. Well, that's odd. Are you sure she didn't leave a note? Oh, he couldn't find one. She's been out all afternoon. Grand always lets us know when she's going out and always makes our lunches. Well, I'm sure she knew you'd survive. How about a driving lesson? Oh, great. Yeah. And if you've got to learn to drive, you might as well learn to drive properly. Liz, what about doing your grand a favour and getting the vegetables started for her? Okay. <coughs> well, you better get a move on, because she's likely to walk in the door any moment. All right. Good afternoon, Daniels Corporation. Oh, yes, Jim. Um, no, we haven't seen her all day. Uh, here's Paul now. It's your father. Will I put it through? No, I'll take it here. G'day, Dad. And what happened to Grand? She said she was coming back this afternoon. I don't know. She's still out. The car's gone, so I'm not sure where she's got to. Oh. Well, the office was empty at lunchtime for a while. Maybe she popped in there. Anyway, she'll show up. Have you spoken to Scott about his new car? Sort of. We've both calmed down a bit now about his exam results. As a matter of fact, I'll just give him a driving lesson. Oh, really? What did you think of the new wheels? Good. Good doing the tune-up, though. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm sorry I was a bit short with you about buying it for him. I, it was a nice gesture. I'm just a bit worried about him getting back into a car, that's all. Yeah, sure. And Dad, thanks. Look, I'm going to be working back to that. Um, can you tell Grant to give me a call when she does get in? Yeah, sure. I'll catch up with you later. Okay, bye. bye. I want you to wait back for me tonight, Sue. Tonight? Yep. Um, I can't. Mrs Kirkwood's going out tonight. Oh, how could Clive look after Sam? He did when he came to Adelaide with me. Um, yeah, but he's got a patient due to have a baby and he might be called out to deliver it. I thought you and Sam came first with Clive no matter what. If you'd asked me earlier, I might have been able to arrange it. Well, I'm asking you now. I'm sorry, but you've left it too late. I'm due to pick up Sam in ten minutes. Oh, of course, you have to cook Clive's dinner too, don't you? I don't have to do it. Clive's more than capable of cooking his own meals. But I want to. I want to do as much for him as I possibly can. He's done so much for me. Is that why you're marrying him, is it? Out of gratitude. That's none of your damn business. And that's why you're treating me like this, isn't it? Because I'm going to marry Clive? Oh, you've got tickets on yourself, haven't you? Look what I took you on. You said you were up to this job. I was ten minutes late back from lunch. The first time I've been late back in weeks. Does that make me inefficient? Incapable of doing the job? If you can't start treating me like a human being, you better find someone else. Are you resigning? No. If you want me to go, you'll have to fire me. I'm not going to make it easy for you. Well? I'll think about it overnight. You do that. Good night, Jane. Good night. Jane, would you work back a couple of hours for me tonight? Uh, sure. I'll have to ring Nan, though. Fine. Actually, how would you like to make this job a little more permanent? Not if you're going to fire Susan. Well, integrity as well as intelligence, eh? Thanks. But she hasn't been to the community justice centre. No, she's probably just gone to an art gallery, Dad. Lost track of time or something. No, they're still closed for the Christmas break. Dad, I don't know anything about Grant. Not yet, darling. She'll probably walk through that door at any moment. What about dinner? The vegetables are going brown. Mm. Well, I don't know what meat to cook. How about chops? I'd rather rice. Yeah, well, I'd rather Grant's cooking, Dad. Oh, what's wrong with my yeah, cooking? Maybe Mrs. Mitchell's seen her. Well, there's a thought. I might just slip over and check. If Charlene's home, don't say anything about the car, OK? I uh, want to say something myself. OK? All right. I'm hungry. Oh, well, maybe the best thing we have some takeaway. You go get something for us. Sure. Stuff. What do you want? Chinese or pizza? Anything you like. Pizza! Meat? Pizza! All right, you set the table. Get everything ready. Oh, I wish I could drive there. Yes. Well, after the driving lesson today, I reckon you'll be ready to go for your test. Just two more lessons. Yeah? Hmm. Oh, great. All right, I'll be back soon. You don't need cutlery with pizza. You eat pizza with your fingers. Oh, you're right again. Well, is there anything happened today to upset you, Gran? Well, I mean, apart from Scott's HSC results. Well, there was another one of those letters from America. The ones she doesn't tell us about. Oh, yeah. Who are they from? Well, don't worry about that, darling. That's your Gran's business. Well, you set the table. I'm going to see Mrs. Mitchell. Back in a moment. Okay. Hope Gran's all right. I'm sure she's fine. Just running a bit late. Oh, what, what sort of good news? Yeah, uh, I believe that when I hear it. All Dad seems to bring with him is trouble. Yeah. Come here. Oh, Mum, I do wish you could have talked him out of it. He was only here a few weeks before Christmas. Yep. Yes, Mum, thanks for warning me. I'll speak to you later in the week. Bye. Ooh. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you for telephone call. No, we've finished. That was just Mum warning me that Dad's about to land on us again. She says he's got good news for me. The only good news as far as Dad's concerned is he's staying at home. <laughs> mm, how's Scott's foot? Oh, he's had the plaster off. Seems as good as gold. I've hardly got any limp at all, really. Oh, they heal quickly when they're young, don't they? Yeah. Madge, have you seen Helen at all today? Helen? No, I don't think so. Why? Is something wrong? Oh, I don't know. She was due to start back at work this afternoon, but she didn't turn up. But the car's not there. She must have gone somewhere. 
I still wonder she's not back by now. That's what I thought. Of course, uh, she has been pretty upset lately. You said she told you. Well, she told me some of it, but um, I can't help feeling that she's not telling me everything. Yeah, I got the same impression. I've been getting these letters lately from America. Never says much about them, but they always seem to upset her. She got one today. Well, maybe that's the explanation. Maybe she just wanted to be alone for a while. Yeah, maybe. Is Mrs. Daniels at home? No. Ah, oh, then perhaps your father. No, he's not home either. Is there anyone I can talk to? Yes, both. You're here alone? My dad will be back any minute now. Ah, then perhaps I'll come in and wait for him. It's okay, you're quite safe with me. I am a minister of the church. Yeah, I guess so. Come in. Do you have any idea what time Mrs. Daniels will be home? No, didn't even know she was going out. We should hurry up, Grant's usually home by now. Oh, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. She's probably visiting friends or something. Yeah. Although it is hard not to worry these days. So many, so many terrible things happen to people. Makes you afraid to step out from your own front door sometimes. Grant says that sometimes. Hello, Errol Price. Mr. Robertson. Ah, yes, you were Terry's father-in-law. Do you know Terry? Yes, I did. She was a lovely girl. It was such a tragedy. Have you set the table, darling? Oh, I've nearly... Yeah, OK. Please sit down, Reverend Price. I'm sorry, you were saying something about Terry. Oh, I should have explained. I'm the prison chaplain at the Lincoln Detention Centre. I see. I got to know Terry quite well. Well, very well, as a matter of fact. And there are a couple of things I was hoping to discuss with you and your son. But obviously I've come at rather a bad time. The little girl, Lucy, is it? Yes. She tells me your mother-in-law's missing. Oh, Lucy's a bit of an exaggerator. Helen's not exactly missing. She's just a, a bit late getting home. She's probably visiting friends or something. You know, that's exactly what I said. I'm home. Where's the little man? Sleep. I must be losing my touch. My kisses are meant to be guaranteed at a range of 50 metres. Better try again. you all right. So is Mrs. Christopoulos. What? The pregnancy we've been having all that trouble with. She had a son, Alexander Theo Clive Christopoulos, at 5.27 this afternoon. It's her fourth try. We've been treating her with kid clubs, uh, so to speak, trying to get her somewhere near full term. She's actually four days late. You make it sound like all her troubles are over. Hope she's not planning on going back to work. You've had a fight with Paul. Oh, I can't hide anything from you, can I? Well, Paul's never been the easiest person to work for. Ask anyone who's tried. Zoe, Kate, Madge, he expects too much. We weren't arguing about work. I see. Well, well, on the surface we were, but that wasn't really what it was all about, if you know what I mean. Sure. In his own self-destructive way, Paul's still in love with you. If our positions were reversed, I know I'd be jealous. I mean, you wouldn't take it out on anybody else. There is a way around it. Hmm? <laughs> no, Clive, I, I pay my own way. I'd only have to increase my workload at the surgery a little bit. I said no. If it's my problem and I'll handle it. Now go get changed because dinner will be ready in ten minutes. Yep, that'll just give me time. Time for what? I thought I'd go and pay Mrs Mangle a quick visit. But you just got home. Ten minutes, I promise. Huh? You know, uh, you're lucky I'm not the jealous type because... Okay. um. I'd be worried about you and Mrs. Mangle. I can't hide anything from you, can I? Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. Ten minutes. I'm coming. Oh, Dr. Gibbons. Well, this isn't my night. Nobody seems very glad to see me. Oh, you know, you're always very welcome here. It's just that, well, I'm not feeling too well today. You haven't been feeling too well for quite a while now. Please, sit down. Thank you. How's Jane? I saw her in passing at breakfast. She seemed quite well then. She's working late at the office. When are you going back to work? I don't know. 
next week, perhaps. Mr. Robinson's holding my job open until I feel up to returning. How about Len? Have you heard from him? No. And I don't expect to. What's more, I don't want to hear from him. I do not want his name mentioned in this house. Mrs. Mangle, please, tell me what happened that night. If you'll excuse me, I have dinner to prepare. No, you don't. You're not staying here and having dinner by yourself tonight. You're coming over to have it with Susan oh, and no, myself. Oh, no, I couldn't, That Dr. is not Gibbons. an invitation. It's a prescription. Oh, no, no. Good to get out of could I impose You could. Okay. Take a bag and we'll go. Yes, yes well, indeed. Oh, well, if you insist. Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm sorry, but there's nothing you or anyone can tell me about Terry that I really want to hear. Why don't you listen to what he has to say first? Look, Terry's dead. I'm the one that has to live with it. We all do. We all have to share the responsibility for her death. I got to know Terry quite well while she was with us, if anybody can claim to have known her well. And I can't help telling myself there must have been something more I could have done to get through to her, some different approach I could have tried. Hang on, hang on. There was another minister at the prison the night she died, an older man. Oh, yes, yes, my relief. I wasn't on duty at the time. I wasn't there when she needed me most. Yeah, it wouldn't have made much difference. I mean, there's nothing you could have done. It's just the way Terry was. Sorry, Dad. There was a cue about two miles long. This is my other son, Scott. Scott, Reverend Price, he knew Terry. Yeah, I saw him in Street this morning, didn't I? Ah, uh, yes, yes. I intended on calling earlier. Unfortunately, I found I'd left my address book at home. I wasn't sure exactly which house. However, I'm very glad to have met you all. I'll leave you with your dinner. Oh, thanks. And I know you have other worries on your minds. Well, perhaps we could call back tomorrow. Helen will be home by then, and I'm sure she'd like to meet you. Oh, and me also. My prayers will be with you. You might at least have tried to be polite. Dad, don't start. I don't want anyone bringing out my past again, minister or no minister. It's not my fault that he's losing sleep because he wasn't there the night Terry died. It doesn't occur to you that he came round here because he thought you might be losing sleep too. I thought I was coping very well until he showed up. Oh, you poor. Sometimes I wonder. Well, you look very happy, don't you? <laughs> Well, now, um, I can't eat beans, of course. They're much too acidic. Yes, Mrs. Mangle. Oh, and lamb. All that fat. No beans, no lamb. Have you seen the egg whisk? <gasps> Clive, uh, no, we've got one. Definitely used to use it to strain spaghetti. <clears throat> what is that woman doing here? Look, I realise you've had a lousy day, and maybe I should have thought it through a bit better before I asked her. But she's had a rough trot lately. You'd have done the same thing if you'd been there. I wouldn't bet on it. Hmm? All right, but... Don't expect me to be the life and soul of the party. No beans, no lamb. You're having both. It's all under control. I'm making omelette. Not even Mrs. Mangle could object to wholesome, nourishing eggs. Mm, I wouldn't bet on that. Oh, oh, no. Leave it, leave it. Mrs. Mangle, would you mind checking on Sam, please? I can't be looking after babies with my arthritis. Excuse me. I think I could smell something burning. What's all this about then? Getting all hot and bothered. There. That's better, isn't it? Yeah. Shh, 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 shh. That's better. <laughs> a big smile. Yeah, well, she just needs a bit of work on it. No, he was a reverend, sweetie. Yeah, you didn't know the rules. Never let strangers into the house or you're right, you're right. Thought oh, you'd jump at the chance of getting some practice. Yeah, well, she just... Are you going to be on the phone all night? Dad, he's saying... Talking to Charlene about his new car. The girl only lives next door. Right, I'll speak to you tomorrow. I don't want the telephone tied up in case your grandmother's trying to get through to us. Look, she's probably just got tied up with friends somewhere and lost track of time. Come on, Dad, I bet you that's just what's happened. Look, I guarantee she's going to come walking in that door, all embarrassed... Grand never comes home late, not without telling us where she is first. Oh, look, why don't I phone some of her friends and see if anyone's seen her? Thank you. I use the phone at the office so I don't tie this one up. But I'll check a diary. There might be something in there. Good idea. Uh, if you don't have any luck there, would you start calling the hospitals? Just in case. <laughs> What's this there? Now that's white with one sugar, right? Thank you. Sugar's one thing you doctors haven't taken away from me yet. No, I'm sure it's only a matter of time. Come on, Sam, time for your nightcap. May I? 
Uh, he, he's a bit fussy, aren't they? All, oh, my dear. <laughs> so what do you say, Sam? Would you like Aunt Janelle to feed you? Yes, I'm sure he would. <laughs> oh, why not? Thank you. We've got some carrot cake somewhere, haven't we? Uh, yeah, in the pantry. I'll get it. Well, at least some things don't change. Babies will always need someone to feed them. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy it while you can, my dear. He won't thank you for it later. Of course, in my day, there just wasn't a chance for a mother to go out to work. It just wasn't done. I gave up everything to look after my children. No, they don't thank you. But I thought you only had one. Amanda? Amanda's the only one I've kept up with. But there was another. That's a side of motherhood that you have yet to learn about. Oh, come on now, young man. Not so fast. You give yourself a tummy ache. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Good night. What do you say? None of her friends have seen her today. What about the hospitals? No one answering her description has been admitted. It's not pretty bad, is it? Oh, I don't think there's a need for us to panic yet. Craig's never done anything like this before. Look. We know she's not in hospital, so that means she hasn't had an accident or anything. She probably had to go somewhere and forgot to tell us. You ought to go to bed and stop worrying about it. Yeah, okay. Good night, Dad. Good night, mate. Now, just check that Lisa's asleep, will you? And I tell her if she isn't. Tell her what I told you. But I'm sure Helen's going to be all right. Okay. No. Right. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to report a missing person. Been up all night. Well, I thought. No, I don't know what I thought, really. Best to have someone on deck, I suppose. So there's no need to ask you if you've heard anything. Are uh, you? No, no. Oh, I did find a car, though. Where? I was in the car park at work. I didn't see it there last night. And somebody put it there. Dad, I said I didn't see it there. That doesn't necessarily mean it wasn't there. What did the police say? Come on, Dad. You got the right to know. Well, as a matter of fact, they weren't very interested. Oh, are you kidding? Your grandmother's past the age of consent. She's entitled to stay out all night if she wants to. I mean, they even suggested she might have wanted a night off on her own. Yeah. Grand wouldn't go off without telling us. Well, I know that, and you know that, but you have to look at it from their point of view. They get dozens of calls like this every day. 95% of them are false alarms. Oh, yeah? What about the other 5%? Well, Paul rang and asked if I'd seen him, but that's all I know. Jim Robinson wasn't at all keen to discuss the matter when I called over to inquire. From what I can gather, Mrs. Daniel's been missing all night. Her clothes are still there, but she's disappeared without a trace. Amnesia. I doubt it, Mrs. Mangle. Oh, you read about it all the time. People lose their memories, wander off. Yes, well, it does happen, but it's pretty rare. I think you'll find she'll turn up any minute with a boring but logical explanation. Now, if you'll excuse me, do you Oh, yes, calls yes, all... of course. Is uh, Susan still home? I uh, wanted to give her these and thank her for the evening. They're homemade. It's a lovely thought, but I'm afraid Susan's not here. She's taken Sam over to Mrs. Kirkwood's on her way to work. Oh, well, you can take them. And thank you for inviting me. I'm glad you accepted. Mm -hmm. It was a pleasant evening, wasn't it? 
Oh, young Sam's a delight. <laughs> Now, how Susan can look after him properly and work at the same time. Yeah, hopefully she won't have to work after we're married. She won't be getting married as a bride, of course. I mean, in white, with all that implied. Susan only wants a simple wedding. Oh, yes, of course. Well, I... Oh, Mr. Robinson, is there any news of Mrs. Daniel? No, no, not yet. In fact, I'm just checking to see if anyone did see her yesterday. You sure neither of you did? Sorry. We're at a loss. I've just thought. There must have been someone home when that minister came round because somebody let him in. But last night, but Dad and Lucy were... No, home. no, before lunch, oh, 11.30 at the latest. I remember because I was vacuuming my front room and I thought how strange that a minister should be calling... <laughs> Mrs. Mangle, I... thank you very much, thank you. Uh, I... What on earth? Yeah, yeah, well, thanks a lot. Okay, bye. <sighs> Who's that? Oh, Greg Crowley. His uncle owns a news agency in well, Wall Street. They need someone for the holidays. Greg wanted me to go for it. Why don't you? Well, the interview's this morning. I thought it'd be best if I hang around here. Yeah, I could change. Dad, I can't. I'm not while grand. Listen, I'd rather you had something to do than you were sitting around the place stewing. Go on. Well, Scott, yeah. see if Lucy's all right, would you? It's taking an awfully long time to get dressed. I thought you said the Reverend Pice hadn't met Grant. That's right. Well, what was he doing here yesterday morning? Eh? Well, Mrs. Mangle said she saw him about 11 o'clock and Grant let him in. <laughs> Strange that he didn't mention it. Could have been an oversight. Oh, come off it, Dad. I mean, he said, he actually said he was looking forward to meeting her. Well, let's not make any wild accusations till we've got some proof. Fine, fine, I mean. What are you doing? You want proof? I know just where to get it. Good morning. You're not from this parish, are you? No, no. I didn't think so. I know most of the local ministers quite well. Of course, they're all much older men. Young people don't seem to be going into the ministry the way they used to. No, it, it does seem as if God's call falls upon deaf ears these days. Good heavens, is at the time. I must dash, if you'll excuse me. I happened to see you yesterday when you called on Mrs. Daniels. I was rather hoping that you'd come back today. I need to uh, talk things over with a clergyman. Surely your own minister. Oh, sometimes it's so much easier to discuss things with a stranger, if you follow my meaning. I would love to oblige, but I, I promise... In my day, it was considered unchristian to turn one's back on a, on a stranger when they approached you for help. But I suppose all that's changed. You're quite right. I do apologize. There are times when we all need to be reminded of our duty. As the Lord reminds us in the parable of the Good Samaritan. Oh, yes, exactly. Yep. You look fine. Yeah, well, I still don't feel right about going there. I'll let you know if anything happens, I promise. Paul's taking the day off. He and Lucy can keep me company. Who's he talking to? Oh, I don't know, a client or something. No, no, you can get a move on and don't be late. Make sure you get the job, because the money will come in handy for you to insure your car. Yeah, OK. Go okay. up. Uh, see you later, I suppose. Good luck. Good luck. Thanks, Paul. Uh, Lucy, I think Basil's probably a bit lonely. Why don't you go and have a talk to him? Have you found something out about Grab? No, no. Yes, you have. I want to know, Paul. But here you, Paul. What's wrong? All right, I got on to the governor of the jail. Yes, there is a minister there by the name of Reverend Price. But he's on holidays at the moment. Yeah, well, that's fine. I mean, that explains how he had time to come here. Dad, Reverend Price, the real Reverend Price, is 52 years old. Oh, my God. I said there was another minister there the night Terry died. There was only one minister that works at the jail, and the guy that was here last night is not him. What? Who, who is he? I don't What's know. he up to? No idea, but I know one thing for sure. He's got to have something to do with Grant's disappearance. You've got to find him. But how? Well, he said he was coming back here today. <laughs> Not likely after the reception he got from me. And if he doesn't come back, where do we start looking? So as you can see, Reverend Price, I was distraught at the time. 
I didn't know which way to turn. My only thought was to rid myself of him once and for all. You mustn't distress yourself. Your husband obviously subjected you to all kinds of provocation. Oh, he did. Indeed, he did. I suffered at his hands for most of my life. If anyone ever had an excuse for such callous behavior, it was me, surely. We're all human, Mrs. Mangle. Well, I can't say how pleased I am to be able to discuss these delicate matters with such a charming member of the clergy. That's what I'm here for. But as much as I'd love to continue our chat, I did promise the Robinsons I'd pop in first thing. Oh. Perhaps I can come and visit some other time. I look forward to it. I'm afraid I've been very selfish chatting away like this. The Robinsons must be out of their minds with worry over Mrs. Daniels. Yes, it is a very distressing time for them. The Lord moves in mysterious ways. Goodbye, Reverend. Goodbye. I don't think we should call the police about this fellow yet, that's all. Well, I say we should do something. Well, what if we're on the wrong horse? You know what they were like last time? You think we're all going to look like idiots, is that it? No. Look, Dad, I don't know what sort of a stunt this Reverend Price, or whatever the hell he is, is trying to pull. But I bet you anything he's got something to do with Graham's disappearance. I say we get the police. I'd like a bit more evidence first. What more evidence do you need? Look, you know he's not who he says he is. And the guy I spoke to at the prison didn't make some stupid mistake. The real Reverend Price is the one I saw at the prison hospital that night. I'm sure of it. Look, Gran's disappeared. This guy turns up. It can't be coincidence. I'd say he's got something to do with the disappearance. Dad? I told you to stay in your room. But the Reverend's coming up the driveway. I saw him from my window. All right, now we'll make him tell us where Gran is, even if I have to beat no, him. No, Paul, that's not going to work. Well, what do you suggest? Well, he might be the only person who knows where Helen is. We've got to play along with him so he doesn't suspect we know anything. Hopefully he'll let something slip. All right, all right, look, we'll do it your way. But if anything goes wrong, I mean, I'll take things into my own hands. I want you to go over to Ramsey's, darling. But, Dad, but... No, 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 shh, shh. Off you go. This is serious. Quick, out the back door. Good morning, Mr. Robinson. Reverend Price, good morning. I trust uh, Mrs. Daniels arrived home safe and sound? No, she's still missing. Oh dear. I know how difficult this must be for you all, if you'll allow me to share the burden of your worry. Well, it's very thoughtful of you. We were hoping you might call by. Please come in. Good day, Maggie. Oh, it's you. I suppose you better come in. Oh, that's a fine welcome for you, Dad. Mum said you had some good news for me. I told her she was contradicting herself. Charlene, your grandfather's here again. Good day, sunshine. <laughs> Got a kiss for an old digger. Oh, Grant. <laughs> you and Grant aren't fighting again, are you? No, me and Grant aren't fighting again, are we? What's the matter with you lot? A man comes all the way down here. Oh, Shane! You got a kiss for me too? Ah, uh, g'day, Grandad. Hey, yeah, you keeping that kid from down the street under control? Who got the girl? Well, actually, it was a bit of a stunt. Mrs. Mitchell! Mrs. Mitchell! The minister's over at our place. Paul says he's got something to do with Grant's disappearance. What's this about Helen Daniels? We can't find her anywhere. Paul says that Reverend Price has got her and that he's not a real reverend at all. Strict. You been watching those late night movies again, Lucy? Dad told me to come over here. He and Paul want to find out what's happened to Grant. Maybe the Reverend's holding it for ransom, trying to raise money for the orphans. You think I'm making it up, don't you? But I'm not... I'll stop it, the pair of you. Are you sure about this, love? Paul rang the prison that Terry was in. They said that the real Reverend Price was much older than this one. They're scared he might hurt Grant. Maybe I better go next door. Good idea. Let's show him how a Ramsey deals with troublemakers. Oh, no, you don't. Would you stop thinking with your fists for a change? Jim and Paul aren't idiots. Let them deal with the man. Oh, come on, Annie. Imagine... I want Grant to come home. Oh, it's all right, love. It's all right. I understand how distressing this must be for you. I've lost someone close myself. And it must be doubly hard on you. So soon after Terry's death, you must feel some responsibility for that in the circumstances. Oh, that's just something I've learned to live with. Yes, I suppose acceptance of God's will is the wisest choice. I'll make some tea, if you'll excuse me for a moment, Reverend. Of course. 
Forgive me if I upset you by mentioning, Terry. Perhaps if you confront your grief, bring it all out into the open. I'd be only too willing to lend an ear. Oh, you know that spare junk fellow is? Excuse me, Raven, I won't be a minute. Be careful, Paul. Just take it easy. Dad, your way isn't working. I still say we make him tell us there's a better way. We'll get someone to follow him when he leaves. Hopefully he might lead us down. And... Oh, well, I'll follow him. No, no, no. It has to be somebody that he hasn't met. Shane to do. Okay. Well, look, will you keep the referee busy and I'll go and talk to Shane? Yep. Make it quick. We uh, blew the L on the jug. Sorry, Paul's fixing it. Tea shouldn't be long. Dad said that if Paul didn't run, they never find out what happened to Graham. Oh, Paul, I've been worried sick. I Lucy haven't got time us. to explain now, Madge. Listen, I need your help, eh? Uh, yeah, sure, with this minister, Blake. Yeah, yeah, I want you to follow him, just see where he goes. I mean, he might lead us to Graham. Do you reckon? I mean, we're a bit off this cops and robbers stuff, aren't we? Oh, it's our only chance. Well, why can't you go? Well, he knows me. I mean, he's never met you before. Well, why don't you both leave it to the police? We haven't got time, Madge. He's getting nervous. Well, what do you say? Well, it all sounds a bit sus to me, but... No, I don't want to see Helen get hurt. Oh, okay. I'll come with you. Sully, no. Oh, he's got to have a partner. They always do on TV. Now who's been watching too many late night movies? Hold your horses, a lot of you. I'm the best man for the job. I've forgotten more about this sort of stuff than any of you could ever know. I was lead scout of my platoon in the war. Oh, come on, mate. I don't know how much longer... Yes, off you go. Really, you two are going to be a great help, aren't you? A teenage girl who thinks she's Marta Hari and an old man who thinks he won Second World War all by himself. Jeez, you're a stick in the mud, Maggie. I do wish you'd stop treating this as some kind of silly adventure. For goodness sake, Helen Daniels is missing. If Jim and Paul are right and, and this bogus minister's involved, well, it, things could get very serious. Why would he be hanging around your place? Has he got something to do with the disappearance of Helen? I don't know, but I think he's got something to do with Terry's death. But he keeps mentioning it. Anyway, look, he's the only clue we've got, so whatever you do, don't lose him, all right? Ah, don't worry, mate, I'll stick like glue. All right, listen, you give us a ring as soon as you know anything. I'll be at home. I'll be the gallery, let's get this. Hey, we're sending it. It's so good to Scott. Hey, folks, I hope he doesn't think we won't give him a good thumping just because he's wearing his collar back the front. Look, will you two shut up? This is serious. You go and get a rope, sunshine. We might need to tie him up after I've overpowered him. Well, hurry up, girl. What if he's got a gun? He could be really dangerous. Yes, I didn't think of it. You know, my heart condition's been troubling me a bit lately. Nasty pains in the chest and that. Maybe I'll slow you young ones down. I'll go inside the house and have a nip of that medicinal brandy. Set up headquarters. You can't have an army without a headquarters, I always say. Better your wife that. That look, Captain. Why don't you go into the house too, hey? This is no place for a girl. What's it matter that I'm a girl? No, oh, not now. Hey, I've got just as much right to be here as you, Shane Ramsey. And I'm staying. Well, I can't begin to tell you what a tight-knit family this is, and Helen's always been a, a tower of strength. She's, uh, well, since my wife died, she's been a mother to young Lucy. I don't know. I don't know how I'll cope if anything happens to her. Tear the family apart. I can see the depth of your suffering. But what about your son? How's he coping? And where, where is he, by the way? Well, the, the nuts on the, the element were probably seized a bit, and I imagine he's, he's gone down to, uh, to get us back. Oh, here he is. Oh. I was just saying to the Reverend that you were having trouble with the, the nuts. Uh, oh, yeah, the nuts on the jug, they're hard to get on. The devil of a job, actually. It's okay. It won't be long, really. Uh, it's getting late. I have an appointment. Yes, uh, an appointment. I'm afraid I'm going to have to skip the tea. If you'll excuse me. Now, the whole idea is to travel incognito. You'll stick out like a sore thumb if you follow him by yourself. What the hell would you know? You're not coming and that's final. <sighs> The only reason Paul asked you to do it was so he wouldn't get suspicious. Now, what looks more normal? A couple going for a walk or some guy skulking them? How many times I have to tell There he goes. Oh, 
Once in your life, do as you are told. I'll let him get ahead a bit. Then we'll follow. Okay. Young lovers. <laughs> G'day, Kelly. Uh, Charlene, what's shaking? Uh, not much, really. We've got to go. Bye. Great to see you, Kelly. Good luck in your court case, Kelly. Oh, cheer up, Kelly. Going to court's not going to be that bad. It's not the court case. I bumped into Charlene and Shane on my way back from the shops. I treated me like I had leprosy or something. Hardly said two words. It's not like them. And I was dumb enough to think I'd made some friends around this place. Look. You're probably making mountains out of molehills because you're worried about today. Yeah, maybe. Forget Shane and Charlene. You've got far more important things to think about. Now, why don't you go and get changed? We have to convince the magistrate that you're clean cut. A bit of camouflage, eh? Mm. I go and find myself a disguise. Oh, no, that's fine. I'll have to run back and get the bike. Oh, great, it'll only take you half an hour to get it going. Well, I've got to do something. You'll get away for sure. It's not much use to us at a seminar. What I do if they do throw me in the slammer? They won't do that. You could get through this with one arm tied behind your back. You've been in trouble before, but this time I'll be with you. Well, come on, we'd better get going. I suppose I don't have much choice, do I? Oh, just wait until I get my hands on that daughter of mine. You know, I am amazed that you had the good sense not to go with her. Well, it was a tough decision, Maggie. I'm famous for laughing in the face of danger. I don't know why anyone would want to go. The man's creepy. I hope he hasn't hurt Gran. I just don't understand why a man would want to do that sort of thing. Well, he said he knew Terry. Well, that was the reason he gave for coming in in the first place. It seemed as if he wanted to see how upset we were. As if he enjoyed seeing how worried we were about Helen. Well, the man's obviously not right in the head. I really think you should phone the police. Oh, I have. They're sending someone over. Thank goodness for that. At least they listen this time. Yeah. I just hope Shane and Charlene don't lose him. name of that little granddaughter of yours, Mrs. Daniels? Lucy. That's it. Little Lucy. Jim tells me she's very upset about you. She's been crying. I'll get her next. 
I'll give her just enough time to grieve over your death. I feel very sorry for you. I'm afraid you're very sick. I've been watching your family suffer, Mrs. Daniels. Like Terry suffered. Your grandson. He was never good enough for her. I heard Helen's voice. We'll have to get her out of there somehow. Wait here, I'm going in. Oh, wait, Shane. Wait there. He killed her, and I'll kill him, but not yet. I want him to know how it feels. And believe me, Mrs. Daniels, he's suffering. They're all suffering. They're so worried. <laughs> it's okay, I'll move you on. You okay? I can't check on Helen. Oh, come on, mate, get up. Oh, Shane, please. He's outside. It's all right, Mrs. Daniels. It's okay, Shane's got him. Oh, Helen, he sounds like a total madman. Well, the police told us that he was institutionalised for a few years for bashing up some poor young girl. Hmm. He fooled everyone into thinking that he'd made a complete recovery. Anyway, he won't be fooling anybody else for quite a while now. Helen and I have to give the police a full statement later. Yeah, I reckon he should be locked up and they should throw away the key, if you ask me. Well, I don't care what happens to him. Just as long as you're safe, Gran. <laughs> Thanks to Charlene and Jane. I think the best thing for you to do is to have a hot bath and straight to bed. Mm. Yes, sir, that sounds like a good idea. Well, thank heavens you're all right, Helen. Come on, you lot. Helen needs a rest. Oh, thanks again, all of you. I don't know what I would have done without you. Hey, you It was easy, mate. He was pretty weak. Come right? on, Shane. And as for you, young lady, it's a miracle you're still in one piece. I oh. told you not to go. Oh, go on, Shane. Can't you keep off the girls back? See you, Shane. Oh, oh, you oh. oh. I think I... Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I think I'll have that bath. I'll run it for you. Oh, it's good to be home. Oh, Gran, it's good to have you home. Well, Gran's... It's Ralph Drew or whatever his name is. Why did he pick on you? Well, apparently he and Terry were... were once very close. She lost interest. But he never forgot her. He developed this... This frightening obsession about her. And when he was told that she committed suicide, he wanted revenge. So the first thing he did when he was released from that mental institution was to come looking for us. Us or me? Us. Yeah, but it was really me that he wanted to get at, wasn't it? Yes, I suppose it was. Paul, no one's to blame. Ralph Drew was a very sick man. I think I have that probably would have got away. The only thing that saved you was good luck. I specifically told you not to go, and what happens? The minute I turn my back, you sneak off. I've got a good mind to punish you. Oh, strike me, Lucky. Well, is this some sort of a ticker tape parade? You should be proud of her. Yeah, I mean, after all, she did clock the like. Oh, shut up the pair of you. You should learn to control that short fuse of yours, Maggie. I'll thank you to mind your own business, Dan Ramsey, and don't call me Maggie. It is my business, more than you realise. It's about that news your mum said I had for you. I'm in a position to make you a wealthy woman. Maggie? Who'd like a cup of tea? Mum! Didn't you hear what Granddad said? Oh, yes, yes, I heard, but I don't believe a word of it. Your grandfather has a talent for dangling a carrot just before he delivers a lecture. I'm sure he's going to tell me to keep my mouth shut, my shoulder to the wheel and my nose to the grindstone. Not a pretty picture. <laughs> what do you really mean, Granddad, about making only major wealthy woman? What I said. But as she's obviously not interested... But she is, aren't you, Mum? In a word, no. What? I was under the impression you were short of cash. 
I wouldn't be short of cash if you told that rotten son of yours to pay me the money he owes me for the house. Instead of giving it back in dribs and drabs. Is that it? Has Dad come up with the money? <laughs> it's got nothing to do with your father. This is a letter from your Aunt Maud. She's dead. I know she's dead, son. She wrote this on her deathbed. Is it her will? This is her will. This is a letter to your mother. Do you want to read it, Maggie? Trust her to have the last word, even on her deathbed. No, you read it. It sounds more like her coming from you. Why, Mum's carrying on. Aunt Maud sounds like a real dragon. Yeah, I never met her, but the old man was scared stiff of her. My dear Madge, as you were aware, I have never really approved of you and your wild ways. Wild ways, <laughs> Mum? That great Aunt Maud was a very narrow-minded woman. You are fortunate I have been able to find it in my heart to forget the disgraceful incident with that green frog. Oh, trust her to remember that damn green frog. That was 30 years ago. What did she do with that green frog, Annie Match? Well, I... She hid it in Aunt Maud's nighty, and the screams could be heard for miles around. Oh, no! oh, shut up, Charlene. Can I continue? You may remember how I warned you against marrying that no-hope of Fred Mitchell. As usual, I have been proved right. He left you for a young woman, and from what I hear, your two children aren't anything to write home about. Charlene obviously takes after you, and Henry after his father. That does it. Dad, you can tear that letter up. Max and Tom have both grown into fine Ramsey men. Oh, and she must have gone senile. And are obviously financially secure. For this reason, and also because you are my only niece, I am asking your father, Daniel, uh, to decide if you deserve a legacy from me. Till we meet again, your dear departed Aunt Moore. <sighs> does that mean she's left Annie Match some money? How much? It could be a lot of money. It could be none. It all depends. Depends on what? On whether I think it would be better spent as a memorial to the dear old lady. Some sort of set-up at a university, a foundation. Yeah, why not? <laughs> what kind of a memorial could you get for a few dollars? <laughs> You watch your tongue, young lady. Oh, why didn't you just spell it up too? Oh, oh, you should just watch your You're mouth. You're on your way out of the street. It's got nothing to do with I'm, got, I'm going to talk to Daphne Clark about you. Oh, yeah, well, if you reckon you can give me the flick from Ramsey Street, think again. Thanks a lot. It's all your fault. Well, what do I do? Everybody needs good neighbors. Just a friendly wage each morning. Helps to make a better day. door is only a footstep away. Neighbors, everybody needs good neighbors with a little understanding. You can find the perfect That's when good neighbors become 